the brain develops like these wonderful flowers right here. And just like flowers need nutrition, sunlight, and things like that to be able to develop, the brain has specific input that it needs to be able to go through a trajectory of development from the bottom up, from the back to the front. Now when we're born, when we're a baby, there are really simple tools, reflexes that we have to be able to communicate with our world. If I were to swipe the face of a baby like that, they're gonna go like that, looking for a nipple, because it's just a reflex, it's just what they need. It's ingrained in their nervous system to be able to communicate and to process with the simplicity and the complexity of their world. So these reflexes in a baby are called infantile movement reflexes, and they are absolutely necessary for survival throughout the first couple months of life. Now as we grow and we develop and the demands of our world increase, what happens is our brain develops new tools to be able to adapt to them. After reflexes are no longer needed, they disappear and they give rise to new tools, specifically movement, additional movement, and touch. And this time we start to crawl all around, touch everything, put things in our mouth, and it is the tool that we need to be able to understand the complexity of our world. After movement, touch, we begin to develop more auditory and verbal function to be able to communicate, to be able to connect, to be able to express, to be able to grow and develop, and from there we move into visual and cognitive function. About five years old, which isn't fully developed until about the age of 25. Now different stressors, physical, chemical, and emotional, can actually impact our ability to grow and develop like a flower. Because just like a flower needs good input, anything that's gonna stress out a flower is gonna not cause it to bloom as it should, and the same thing happens to our brain. So the severity and timing of that stressor can cause deflections off of this path, depending on where they come. So uh, something that stops us from rising in here, what's gonna happen is this person, this child, is gonna have deflections that cause us to use less complex tools to be able to communicate with their world. Okay. Now when an adult this shows up in a lot of different ways, it can be things like anxiety, it can be different ways that we shut down when we're under stress, but we have a fully developed brain and nervous system, and a child, and a child who's experiencing these types of stressors, well, what can happen is it can literally change and perceive the way that we grow and develop and learn to be able to communicate with our world. Now for you, if your child, if your family, if you even have this, this can show up as something like a, a, a behavior, a tick, a stim, something that the world kind of looks at as something that needs to be fixed or changed, but they don't. Well, these behaviors are, are just simply a window into how our brain is functioning. Because if we can understand what tools we use, what we can start to do is be able to put proper input up into the brain, reduce, inter reduce subluxation, interference, or irritation through things like chiropractic, brain exercises, brain games, different movements that allow us to no longer deflect off the path and be able to rise up in our trajectory, not to treat a behavior, not to treat a symptom, but to just simply allow for our, higher, for our highest expression